Ready to make some music? In this video, I'm comparing the pros and cons of the best and newest small MIDI keyboards. Looking for the nicest key bed, the best drum pads, want to control your mixer and virtual instruments? I'll cover it all and help you decide which one is right for you. Watch until the end because I'm going to show you some unique features that may change your music flow. Comment below to let me know which keyboard you like most or which one you'd recommend. I'll put links to all these keyboards in the video description below. All right, let's get started with the most popular keyboard in this list. If you want a keyboard that's super compact and has great drum pads, get the Akai MPK Mini Mark III. This keyboard is currently the most popular keyboard at this price. And yes, the pads are great, probably the best in this roundup, but it's missing some key features that other keyboards in this list have. For now, let's cover the pros. First, the MPK Mini's pads have great sensitivity and stiffness, and this makes for comfortable finger drumming. This keyboard also has endless encoders, which are really nice to have because the physical knob matches the position of the virtual knob in your DAW or virtual instrument, even after switching instruments or effects. The Artoria and Native Instruments keyboards in this list also have endless encoders, by the way. The keys are decent, not as good as the Mini Lab, but on par with other good mini keybeds out there. The MPK Mini has an arpeggiator, note repeat, and some chord features as well. These are quickly becoming standard features on many keyboards. Most of the keyboards in this list have them. Arpeggiator and note repeat features are nice to have, but you can do a lot of that stuff in your DAW as well. In fact, I took a poll recently and it looks like most of you don't really use these features much. Now on the downside, the MPK Mini Mark III has no transport controls, no play, stop, record buttons, which are essential and included on every other keyboard in this roundup except the Mini Lab. The MPK Mini also replaces a pitch and mod wheel or strip with this joystick, which is not as comfortable to use. Also, this keyboard doesn't have deep virtual instrument control like the Artoria and Native Instruments keyboards in this list. I'll show you what I mean when I get to those. The MPK Mini has out-of-the-box DAW settings for Ableton Live, Logic Pro, FL Studio, MPC Beats, and GarageBand. But honestly, without transport controls, these DAW settings don't really offer much, unlike the next keyboard in this roundup. Let's talk about the Oxygen Pro Mini next. By the way, ever wonder about those super cheap keyboards on Amazon? I'm gonna share my thoughts on those later in the video. The Oxygen Pro Mini is one of my favorite new keyboards because of the extra features it jam packs at the exact same price as the Akai MPK Mini and other keyboards in this list. The Oxygen Pro Mini is one of the best keyboards to buy right now and check it out. Transport control so you can play, stop, record, all from this keyboard. The Oxygen Oxygen Pro Mini has four knobs and four faders. The only keyboard in this roundup with faders. Faders are nice when controlling track volumes because you can use one hand to control multiple tracks at once. This keyboard has all the arpeggiator, chord, and scale features of the MPK Mini and includes traditional wheels for pitch and mod. This is the only keyboard in this roundup with pitch and mod wheels. It has a MIDI out jack at the back, so you can use this keyboard with synths and enjoy the ARP features as well. The Oxygen Pro Mini has decent drum pads, pretty standard, but it has excellent key feel. Oh, and the Oxygen Pro and Native Instruments keyboards here have 32 keys more than the others in this list. This keyboard also has DAW settings for every popular DAW out there. FL Studio, Logic, Cubase, Pro Tools, and Ableton users will be happy that the pads can be used to launch clips. The Oxygen Pro does not have endless encoders, so the knobs have a stop and end point. This could be a deal breaker for some of you, but honestly, with everything else that this keyboard does so well, you might be able to overlook that. Also, this is larger than other mini keyboards in this list. I mean, it will still fit in a backpack, but if you really need something compact, 
keep that in mind. By the way, M Audio also makes a non-pro oxygen keyboard with full size keys. It's cheaper, but I really feel you get a better keyboard overall with the oxygen pro line. And you can get the oxygen pro in full size keys as well. On the downside, if you're looking for deep virtual instrument control, you won't get it on the oxygen pro. What's the big deal about that? Well, let me show you what Virtual Instrument Control gives you next on the Artoria Mini Lab. Oh, and I should mention that a few keyboards in this list include a small screen. It's on the Akai, M Audio, and Native Instruments keyboards. The screens are useful for navigating some advanced features, but I don't really feel it makes or breaks a keyboard. You're gonna be using this in close proximity to your computer, and I find it's just easier to look at your computer screen. All right, let's move on. This is the Artoria Mini Lab Mark II. It's one of the most popular keyboards available right now and has excellent virtual instrument control. But it's also one of the oldest in this list and its age is starting to show with some missing features. Let's talk about the good stuff first. The Mini Lab keys are the best keys available on a mini keyboard right now. If you're an experienced keyboardist or pianist, you'll like these keys. The Mini Lab also gives you 16 endless encoders, the most of any keyboard in this list. And that gives you so much control when you use the Mini Lab with Artoria's own software to control virtual instruments. The Mini Lab comes with Artoria's Analog Lab software and a ton of classic synth, piano, and keyboard sounds and you can tweak them all with these knobs. There is one other keyboard that rivals the virtual instrument control of the Mini Lab. Don't miss the Native Instruments keyboard later in this video. The build quality of the Mini Lab exceeds other mini keyboards as well. But like I said before, it's missing some key features which are now standard on newer keyboards like transport controls, no play, stop, and record, and it's also missing a built-in arpeggiator, note repeat, and it doesn't have chord or scale features built in either. I hope Arturia comes out with an update to the Mini Lab in the near future. If they add some of those new features, I think they'll have a winner on their hands. Until then, if you really want the best key feel and excellent control of Arturia's virtual instruments, the Mini Lab won't disappoint. By the way, this keyboard comes in several colors I really like. Check it out. Gotta love those black keys. Now the Mini Lab does come with some Ableton Live features for clip triggering, but if you're an Ableton user, you'll want to also consider the Novation launch key before making your decision. Okay, I've got three more mini keyboards to discuss, including a brand new one that has unique features. But before I get to that, if you're looking for full size keys around this price, you may want to check out the Nectar Impact LX25 Plus. This keyboard has been out for a long time, but I want to mention it because it's still selling for a great price. In fact, you can get it for less than most other mini keyboards here, and you get a lot of controls for that price. Transport controls, eight knobs, nice pads, full size keys. Of course, this keyboard is starting to show its age a little bit. In fact, Nectar recently introduced a mini version of this keyboard with more features than this full-size version. Let's talk about that one next. Hey, if you're new to making music at home on your computer, you should know that all of these are keyboard controllers only, meaning that they don't have built-in sounds. You need to have them connected by USB to your computer and they play sounds from your computer. This is really the best setup these days because you can get whatever software instruments you want and keep adding more sounds in the future right on your computer. The Nectar Impact LX Mini is the newest keyboard in this list and it checks most of the essential boxes. Transport controls, arpeggiator features, eight pads, eight knobs. These are not endless. The LX Mini has a joystick for pitch and mod that I'm not a huge fan of, but this keyboard does have some new tricks up its sleeve. It has a part two feature, which you can use to do things like switch octaves, transpose, or change MIDI channels temporarily while playing. You could use this to play one instrument and quickly switch to another and back again. That may be useful for a live performance, but I don't know if I'd use it while making music at home. It also has lots of customizable buttons, plus a shift button to access another seven functions of your choosing. The keys feel pretty good and the pads as well. The LX Mini is compatible with lots of DAWs, including FL Studio, Logic, Reaper, Cubase, Studio One, Bitwig, Ableton Live, and others. I tested it with
with Ableton Live and it worked well. Now listen up, device control and clip triggering only work with Macs for Live, so you need Ableton Live Suite to make full use of the Ableton features. You can read more about what features are compatible with which DAWs on their website. Nectar customizes the keyboard settings for different DAWs, and depending on your DAW, you could use the eight knobs to control virtual instruments. I got this working in Ableton Live Suite just fine. The LX Mini doesn't control all eight mixer volumes with the eight knobs by default, but you can map the eight knobs to the mixer yourself if you like. Instead, they want you to use the large knob on the active track only. Of course, you can switch tracks with the buttons and then the knob controls the new active track. And one more thing, given that this keyboard is brand new and includes arpeggiator features, I'm surprised that they didn't include a MIDI out port for synths or a screen for some advanced functions. Still, this keyboard does pack a good number of features and some unique tricks and is compatible with lots of DAWs. If you want a keyboard with lots of customizable buttons and knobs, you should definitely check out the LX Mini. All right, let's move on to a keyboard that's pretty much built around Ableton Live. This is the Novation Launch Key Mini Mark III. When the Launch Key Mini Mark III came out, I said it had raised the bar. It was the first mini keyboard controller introduced with arpeggiator features, transport controls, and a MIDI out in a super small package. And I still think this is an excellent keyboard, especially for Ableton Live users. Novation really optimized the layout for Ableton. Clip and scene triggering, just a breeze. The pad colors match up with the clip colors on your screen, and even the capture MIDI button makes use of the Ableton Live feature that captures what you were playing even if you didn't have record activated. The ease of controlling the mixer, pans, sends, and devices, all top-notch for Ableton users. Where this keyboard falls short is the key feel. The keys are soft, mushy, and pretty uninspiring for me as a pianist. That said, if you're not picky about key feel, you might be more forgiving. How about the pads? Although they're a little small, they feel excellent. The Launch Key Mini typically sells for less than other keyboards in this list, so you'll save a few bucks too. All in all, this is a super compact keyboard that will do wonders for your Ableton efficiency. I should mention that you can use this with FL Studio and Logic as well, so if you use those DAWs, it's worth a look. Okay, no keyboard comparison is complete without native instruments. This is the M32. It has 32 keys versus the typical 25, so it's a little longer in size, and I like having those extra keys. There's something about the simplicity and elegance of Native Instruments keyboards that keeps me coming back. And if you use the Complete Control software and have one of the complete bundles of instruments, you will really appreciate having this keyboard. But that simplicity comes with some drawbacks and this keyboard is still missing some features. I'll get to that in a sec. First, the M32's integration with Native Instruments software is second to none. And because Native Instruments opens their NKS standard to other software makers, you have excellent virtual instrument and effects control with tons of plugins, including those from Artoria, Nexus, Waves, Yuhi, Output, and more. Don't underestimate that. It's super easy to scroll through, audition, and select sounds across all NKS compatible plugins with this additional knob that you don't get on any other keyboard. This bonus knob makes this a great second keyboard to own. Team this up with a bigger keyboard from another company and you can have the best of all worlds. The M32 is also compatible with the most popular DAWs, including Ableton, Logic, and Cubase. Now, what about the M32's drawbacks? Well, there's a big one. It doesn't have pads. It's the only keyboard without drum pads in this list. Native Instruments really wants you to buy one of their machine products to get drum pad control. 
Of course, you can just play drums with the keys. Another thing it's missing is built-in arpeggiator scale and chord features. Native Instruments handles these features through software instead, so you can only use them if you're running the Native Instruments complete control software. Like I said before, you can do a lot of this stuff in your DAW, so it's not a deal breaker for me. The M32 typically sells for more than other keyboards, but it's hard to put a price on those exclusive features that it offers. Okay, so remember I promised to share some thoughts on some super cheap keyboards you see on Amazon? Well, I bought two of them. This is the MIDI Plus Mini Control, which costs around $56. And this is the World Tuna Mini, which costs around $80. Both cheaper than all the other keyboards here, but you get what you pay for. Right away, the lower quality is apparent. I can't really recommend either of these when it comes to build quality. The MIDI Plus feels like a toy and the World Tuna feels loose. Aside from build quality, they do the basics, playing notes, and you can use the drum pads to play drums adequately. Now, the World Tuna Mini offers eight endless encoders and eight faders, which is pretty attractive, but it doesn't work out of the box without downloading its own software. They say the software will allow you to assign MIDI CC numbers, giving you some control of your DAW. Bottom line, you may have success with these, but I'd feel better spending a little more money on one of the other keyboards in this roundup. Hey, if you want to know how to set up your home studio, I have a video that shows you how to do it, including how these keyboards fit into the full setup. You can watch that video here. The best prices for all these keyboards are linked below. And if you're looking for a keyboard with 49, 61, or 88 keys, check the other keyboard reviews on my channel. Keep making the music you love, and I'll see you in the next video.